Formula One returns this weekend with the Dutch Grand Prix, and the focus for everyone will be on whether Red Bull can return to the front of the grid, or if Mercedes and McLaren can extend their performance advantage. While Red Bull started 2024 as the out-and-out -out fastest team, the in-season development of their competitors has been impressive, and trying to call a favourite to win at Zandvoort is almost impossible. Having won the previous three races at his home Grand Prix, Verstappen will be keen to pick up another, but he has given a damning statement on Red Bull's performance at the moment. Today, I'll check out why Red Bull have lost their winning way amid the cheating claims, and what could happen at this weekend's Dutch Grand Prix, so don't go anywhere. Formula One news has been buzzing with talk of Red Bull running illegal brake systems to improve their performance. The rumor suggests that, amid improved fortunes for rival teams McLaren, Mercedes and Ferrari, Red Bull were quietly told by the FIA some weeks ago to discontinue a technical solution in a grey area of the rules around brakes. The theory said that Red Bull had been running an asymmetrical brake system, which allowed them to apply more brake force to the inside wheel of the rear axle. The theorized system, commonly referred to as torque braking, is nothing new to F1. McLaren had such a system on their cars in 97 and 98, known as a fiddle brake, which employed an additional brake pedal in the cockpit to apply braking force to just one side of the car. Applying more braking force to the inside tyre is incredibly useful. The turn-in phase of cornering is crucial to any car's performance, and you can set up torque braking to make the car more responsive in slow corners in particular, which is where these current ground-effect cars are very prone to understeer. The performance gains wouldn't be insignificant, giving a boost to any team who could use a system. However, the FIA have clarified that Red Bull have not been using such a system, and the recent rule change relating to such systems is just precautionary, not in response to any team using torque braking. To counter the accusations, Red Bull have gone to the media to explain why they've suddenly been caught by Mercedes and McLaren. They're saying that actually, it is completely expected that they've started to struggle. Technical director Pierre Wash said that it is in fact the limitations of the regulations that are to blame. If you spend three years developing a car concept and the regulations offer little freedom, then you automatically approach the limit, he's quoted by Automotor and Sport. The biggest problem is that the rules are much stricter than with the old cars. We can no longer do what we want, that's why it's more difficult to react to problems. One particular problem for Red Bull has been Sergio Perez. A story that did the rounds yesterday was that the only reason Red Bull were keeping him was because his sponsors had committed to paying any shortfall in earnings for Red Bull if they didn't win the Constructors' Championship, including the bonuses paid to all team members. The story is false, but the fact that it gained traction shows just how much attention his poor performances have generated. Instead, Perez has claimed that Red Bull are to blame for his poor performances. The Mexican driver signed a two-year contract extension earlier in the season, but since then, his form has plummeted, and he hasn't finished higher than seventh since the Miami Grand Prix. Talking about what has been holding him back, he said, It's definitely been pickier and harder. At the moment, we feel like there has been something that we've introduced in a few weekends, that whether it's with an upgrade or with setup or with tires, these cars are so sensitive, that has made this window a lot smaller. With Verstappen no longer winning every race, there could be some logic in what Perez says. Max has the ability to control a car which is borderline undrivable for the majority of the other drivers on the grid. While Max still looks faster than Checo, he certainly hasn't been as commanding and comfortable in the RB20 in recent races. His radio messages often include complaints about the car's balance, a telltale sign that Red Bull are now struggling with their setup, potentially a problem that has been introduced by their upgrades this year. Recent rumors have said that Red Bull may try and backtrack some of their upgrades after the summer break to try and find a car that Perez is happier driving. The theory is that while the peak performance of an older configuration may be slower, if Perez can't get the most of the current car, then it doesn't matter what the peak performance is. Red Bull technical director Pierre Wash has admitted that the car becoming more difficult to drive has been a factor in Checo's struggles. One part of the explanation can be that. That is correct. What we want is the quickest car, but in a way that can be used by the drivers, that is the main aim. If we make the car quicker in a way that Checo can use it, that means that both drivers will be able to extract the maximum out of it. Advisor Helmut Marco has said that the RB20 has become a nightmare to drive. At the start of the season, we had a car that was as balanced as the McLaren is now. It could handle all tracks and all conditions. Then we took a wrong turn somewhere. 
the car has become a bitch that only Max can tame. However, he did go on to say that while the team are acknowledging that they have made the car too difficult for Checo to drive, they won't be upgrading it to specifically help him. Instead, they'll try to make it easier for him through the car setup. For sure, there can be differences in driving styles, but we'll not use the development of the car for that. We'll use the setup of the car, said Pierre Wash. Checo will have been busy in the simulator over the summer break, trying to find a setup he's comfortable with for the Dutch Grand Prix, because his team desperately needs him to start scoring big again. With 10 races left in the season, Red Bull hold a slender 42-point lead in the Constructors' Championship over their rivals McLaren. What is in their favor is that in recent races, victory at the Dutch Grand Prix has been virtually assured for Red Bull. Verstappen has won all three races held at Zandvoort since the track's return to the annual race calendar in 2021, with his Red Bull team in a league of their own for much of that time. However, he has won just two of the last seven races and none of the last four. He only stood on the podium once in that quartet of events leading up to the summer break, when he finished second at Silverstone, though he would have done so in Austria had he and Lando Norris not collided with just a handful of laps to go. If Verstappen and Red Bull could have picked a track to visit as F1 returns from the summer break, it would have been Zandvoort. Verstappen will have an army of loyal fans roaring him on from the grandstands at a circuit that has been very good to him. It is the perfect place for Red Bull to lay down a marker and prove that they are still the team to beat for the Constructors' Championship this year. While the final rounds of this season are an important battle for Red Bull to win, it is off track where they are having their biggest problems. Red Bull are finding out the hard way that success brings attention. When your team is successful, the rest of the grid want to know why and which team members are behind it. The other teams have been coming for Red Bull's top employees, with Dan Fallows going to Aston Martin, Rob Marshall going to McLaren, Lee Stevenson and Jonathan Wheatley going to Audi, and Adrian Newey just resigning. All left for other teams to take up a new challenge, but also because they could make more money at a new team than Red Bull could offer them. It is a problem that Mercedes found when the budget cap was introduced and the chart-topping expenses had to be curtailed. Salary increases for these employees are out of the question because there's only so much Red Bull can spend each year. Helmut Marko has said that while they may have lost some team members, the rest will not be going anywhere. We are broad and well positioned, and we will fight for every employee. With Red Bull under pressure on track and off it, do you think they'll struggle over the remaining 10 races? Can they create a car that Sergio Perez is happy with? And will they retain the Constructors' title? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.